Welcome back to Flagship Studio here at JPM 2023. I am joined today by Foghorn CEO, Adrian Gottschalk. Adrian, thank you for joining us in the Flagship Studio. Thanks for having me today. Great to have you here. What is Foghorn talking about at JPM and what are you most excited about in terms of what the 2023 program looks like for Foghorn? Sure. So. Uh uh, we're tremendously excited about what we're doing here in 2023. A uh, lot of ongoing conversations here at the conference, both uh, with investors as well as uh, strategic partnerships, uh, talking to a lot of people who are interested in the company, the science, uh, and the story that we're telling here. And um, you know, maybe to take a step back and just talk about what it is that we're doing at Foghorn. Why, are, why am I excited about 23, but also why am I excited to be the CEO at uh, this awesome company? And um, you know, if, if I rewind the clock uh, a few years to when the company was started and the work that we've been doing, um, this is a field of biology that has basically been unexplored, unexploited, uh, and hasn't really been amenable to drug discovery and development. And over the past five, six years, that's what we've changed. Uh, we've changed the whole landscape, in my opinion, of going after uh, this biology that is implicated in over 50% of cancers, let alone other diseases. And when you say this biology, do you mean chromatin biology this is, specifically? This is the chromatin regulatory system, which, you know, to make a simplifying yeah. analogy here, um, this is about modulating gene expression. And the, the simple analogy I like to think about here is one of an architect uh, and the blueprints, right? The blueprints obviously being mm -hmm. genes and the architect being this chromatin regulatory system, which is determining when, where, and how genes are turned on and off. Um, and again, this has been an area of biology that hasn't been exploited. Um, there's no therapeutics that we know of that are in the clinic other than the ones that we've put in there uh, uh, in this area. So uh, tremendously excited about the potential of this biology. Uh, when I look into 2023, what are the exciting things that are coming our way? What are the milestones? So we're going to have uh, data on our first clinical program, FHD286. This is uh, an important uh, target for us. Uh, we're initially going to disclose data here in the middle uh, part of the year in a uveal melanoma cancer. This is a cancer of the eye, metastasizes to the liver, extremely mortal, a lot of comorbidities as well. So we're going to have our phase one clinical data on, on that, uh, initial phase one data. We're also going to have uh, fa initial phase one clinical data on our FHD609 program. This is a program going into synovial sarcoma. Okay. Uh, this is a cancer of uh, sort of a, a soft tissue, uh, very high level of mortality as well. We're going to have our initial clinical data middle part of the year. Uh, we're also going to be able to uh, give guidance and, and uh, 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 resolve, uh, hopefully, uh, the hold that we have with the FDA on uh, 286 and AML. Um, you know, perhaps equally exciting to our clinical stuff, though, is what we're doing in the rest of the pipeline. So uh, the rest of the we, pipeline. we've got uh, tremendous collaboration with Loxo at Lilly. Uh, this was a seminal uh, oncology deal that we did did back in December of uh, 2021. It was actually, to our knowledge, the largest preclinical oncology deal that's been done to date in the industry. I remember a lot of attention at the time. A lot of yeah. attention. It was a $380 million upfront uh, for some really important targets in oncology. So uh, we're continuing to make progress there. Uh, we're we're, we're uh, uh, on track to knock on wood, have an IND with that program uh, here in the, in, the, in the next 12 to 14 months. Um, and then we're also progressing our partnership with Merck, again, another important player in the oncology space, let alone our proprietary pipeline. So just as a reminder, we have over 15 different programs uh, ongoing within the company. I think this speaks to the prolific nature wow. uh, of the platform that we've built. And at, at, at the end of the day, that's what gets me excited. Coming back to that question is the exciting part is we have a platform that allows to drug the system in a way that others haven't been able to. Uh, the targets that we're able to go after uh, are uh, in a way that others haven't been able to go after. Uh, and there's really no end in sight of the things that we can do with this. So, uh, you know, it all sets us up for a very rich uh, pipeline and also an exciting 2023. Are all 15 programs in the pipeline all uh, tackling cancer? Uh, at this point in time, we've been focused on oncology. But the interesting thing about this biology, and this is something we've talked about uh, from the very beginning of the company, is that uh, when something's important in biology, it tends to repeat itself. And indeed, that is the case. You see that there's applications of 
uh, gene expression modulation or this chromatin regulatory system uh, in areas of autoimmune disorders, neurological disorders, areas also of metabolism. So we are starting to think about other areas beyond cancer, but at present, everything that we've got within the 15 plus programs and our collaborations are focused on cancer. And when you think about, you know, our theme here is big leaps, bigger leaps. And when you think about the ability to regulate in the way you've described and the areas both within and beyond oncology, if we're having this conversation back on stage in 2028, what could you imagine us talking about then in terms of Foghorn's program? Well, uh, 2028, I think we're going to be having a conversation about how we're helping patients with cancer with approved drugs. Uh, knock on wood uh, with, with some of our current programs, but also ones that are coming through the pipeline. Uh, so we're going to be actually talking about how we're changing people's lives uh, who have had the unfortunate diagnosis of cancer. I think we're going to be talking about other disease areas, potentially autoimmune disorders, uh, may, maybe something in neurology where we're going to have a pipeline of programs coming forward uh, uh, over the course of the next few years in that knock on wood. Um, and I think we're going to be talking about a company uh, that is going to be one of those standout companies that is helping hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of cancer patients. I think that's another interesting point is when we look at the pipeline today, just with the programs that we've currently disclosed publicly, let alone uh, what, what is undisclosed, yeah. just the, 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 the public pipeline is over half a million patients mm -hmm. in cancer. And so we believe there's millions of cancer patients that will ultimately be able to help. So I think this is going to be uh, one of those standout biotech companies people will look at and say, this has fundamentally changed how we look at cancer and how we look at treating disease. Tackling some of the deadliest, most dangerous cancers and a pipeline that will bring us to other cancers and well beyond. Thank you so much for joining us, talking bigger leaps here at the flagship studios. CEO Adrian Gottschalk from Foghorn Therapeutics. Thank you for having me. Pleasure Thank you. Here. Thanks. Thank you.